Hey, what's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome little budget gaming PC that I recently picked up from Walmart. And by budget, I'm talking at the $599 range. Now, if we were to take a look at this a year and a half ago, it definitely wouldn't be worth it. But since PC part prices and especially graphics card prices are skyrocketing right now, this is actually a really great deal because if you tried to get a hold of all the parts they use to build this, it would cost you a lot more than $600. Now, if you try to pick one of these up on Walmart's website, you're not going to find it for $600. They're listed for around eight to nine, and that's because third-party companies swoop in, buy all the online stock up, and then immediately relist it for much higher than Walmart sold it for. So what you got to do is go in store and see if they have them in stock. Now, luckily, there's two Walmarts within a 30-mile radius of me. The first one I went to had one on the shelf. I went ahead and bought it. And a couple days later, I made it over to the other Walmart. They actually had two in stock ready to go on the shelf for the same price, $5.99. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, this PC might look familiar to you because about a month ago, I was able to pick one of these up for less than $500 on eBay. It was a refurbished model. It looked brand new and performance on these is absolutely amazing for the price when it comes to PC gaming and even emulation. But since then, all of those refurbished ones have been sold out. I don't know if they'll ever come back in stock. So I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at a brand new one from Walmart at that $600 price tag and see if it's worth it. So along with the PC itself, we're also going to get our keyboard, and I believe this comes with a mouse. It's just a plain Jane HP mouse and keyboard. We also get our power cable and instruction manual. Let me go ahead and get this out of the box. And here it is. This is actually a pretty small form factor when it comes to gaming PCs, and they claim that this is upgradable. We have a 400 watt power supply. 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 6-core Ryzen 5 3500, and a GTX 1650 Super. And if you take a look at eBay right now or third-party sites selling 1650 Supers right now, you'll see that when I go to buy it now and lowest price first, $251 with $11 shipping, but uh, this already sold out. I mean, it sold out immediately. So the second cheapest one here is $350. This is an OEM variant, kind of like the one we have in the HP right now. And this cost over half of what I paid for this whole PC. So with the market like it is right now, this coming in at $599 isn't a bad deal at all. So I went ahead and pulled the side panel off and the hard drive caddy out just so we could take a look at the inside of this thing. We have a 400 watt 80 plus power supply, that GTX 1650 Super, given it's an OEM variant, but it performs really well. This comes pre-installed with a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and we have that six core Ryzen 5 3500. We do have enough power supply to upgrade this GPU down the road to something like a 1660 Super, but if it was up to me, there's two upgrades that I would do to this machine and kind of leave it like it is. I would add an extra stick of RAM, bringing it up to 16 gigabytes in dual channel, and I would add an extra hard drive to hold more games. So taking a look at the 1650 Super, it's an OEM variant. There's no backplate on it. We have that aluminum heatsink with a single fan, four gigabytes of GDDR6. It is overclockable using something like Afterburner. And I've had really good luck with 1080p gaming on the 1650 Super. So we should get some good performance out of this. And like I said, I've already tested this PC given it was a refurbished version. So I kind of know how this thing's going to perform and it does really great. All right, so here we are. This is running Windows 10 Home right out of the box. I've got a lot of stuff installed to test out here. In this video, we're going to test out some PC games, and we're also going to go over a little bit of emulation. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5 3500, six cores, six threads, nothing extra here. Base clock 3.6 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.1. Eight gigabytes of RAM right out of the box running in single channel mode at 2666. And we have that NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Super, 4GB of GDDR6 VRAM. So first up, we have Dirt 5 1080p, high settings. And I was actually surprised that I was able to take this up to high. When I first started this up, I put it at medium, and I noticed I was getting a really good frame rate, so I just jacked it on up. And yeah, you can definitely play this at 1080p high. Next on the list, Street Fighter 5 1080p, max settings, running at a constant 60. Great little machine for fighters. Doom Eternal, 1080p high. I got an average of 64 FPS, and I think we're kind of limited here by that 8 gigs of RAM. At high settings with 16 gigs, I think we could get much better out of this. 
When it comes to Valorant, it's a super easy game to run. So here we have it at 1080p, everything maxed out, so we're at high settings, and I got an average of 136 FPS by the end of this match. If you want to run this game at 144, take a few of those settings down and you'll be good to go with this machine. GTA 5, 1080p, high settings. I got an average of 81 FPS, and that's totally fine in my book. If you wanted to run this at 60, you could lock it down and turn some of these up to very high, but uh, I think this turned out really nice. Call of Duty Warzone, 1080p, high settings. Now, even with that 8 gigs of RAM, we're right there on the edge. If you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, I mean, it's almost maxed out all the RAM. I was still able to get an average of 86 FPS at high settings. Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low with dynamic fidelity FX CAS on. I've got it set to 60 FPS and the minimum resolution at 70, so it will dip down to a minimum resolution scale of 70, but it's trying its hardest to keep it at 60 FPS, and it's doing a pretty decent job. And finally, CSGO 1080p, very high settings. Now with this, we can't use Afterburner on screen anymore, but it will run in the background. I had to use the built-in Windows game bar, and it looks like it's a little all over the place. But at the end of this run, I took a look at my Afterburner logs, and it stated that I had an average of 154 FPS, but that game bar does look all over the place. I'm going to wrap this video up with some higher-end emulation. Now I pulled all of this footage from the initial video I did with the refurbished version, and this thing handles emulation like a champ. First up, PS2 using PC SX2 with the DirectX 11 backend. The way GPU prices and PC part availability are right now as making this video, I think it would be worth picking something like this up. Or you could always save this money, wait until these prices come down and we can get our hands on some good CPUs and build your own. But if you're looking to game now, this could be a good option. And this is one of the best deals that I've found on a brand new pre-built gaming PC in 2021. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out some more emulation on this thing, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Like I mentioned, if you check out Walmart's website, you're going to see these listed for way more than you're going to pay in store. So you need to check your local stores to see if they have these for that $599 price tag. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this machine, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.